entrepreneurs on Born the Brew. You are now listening to the Entrepreneur Podcast with your host, Adam McChesney. Let's grow! Welcome to the Entrepreneur Podcast. I'm your host, Adam McChesney, and I want to thank you for being here today. We are live from Half Coast Studios here in St. Louis, Missouri. Thank you to Half Coast for this amazing setup and sponsoring the show. If you're looking to start your podcast or take your current one to the next level, definitely come check out what they have going on here. Contact them today for a free consultation. If you're listening, please be sure to subscribe to the show and leave a five-star review on Apple and Spotify. We would love for you to share this content on social media by tagging me, and this way we can get this incredible content out to more people. Today, we have another great episode lined up for you. It's another in-person episode, which I absolutely love. I think it just brings a different atmosphere to the podcast. He and I originally connected a little over two years ago online, and even though we're from St. Louis, we didn't know each other, so I'm super excited to have him on here today. He is one amazing dude with an incredible story. You're going to want to pay attention and be listening for some incredible nuggets of information. I have watched this guy transform both his business and his life to create a lifestyle that he designed to do the things that he wants to do. My guest today is Zach Babcock. He Zach Babcock grew up in psych wards, rehabs, juveniles, and did over five years in prison. And as an adult, then earned his first million dollars and scored his family's three-acre dream home by 33, six years after getting out of prison. Zach helps alpha entrepreneurs build dominant brands with podcasts by getting shows launched and ranked in five weeks or less and at least a thousand targeted subscribers in 90 days. Zach, welcome to the show. Let's go, man. Dude, you're a beast at that introduction, too. I need to step my game up, by the way. Appreciate it, man. Oh, Feeling man. Good, man. No, I appreciate that. I've done this a couple times, not as many as you, but I'm <laughs> getting good at it. I'm getting the rhythm. And I was on your podcast a couple weeks ago, which was awesome. Got to go out to that amazing three acre home. Thanks, man. Yeah, I was the first podcast that was recorded in, at, that, at, uh, yeah. at, at, the, at the poker table. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> dude. So that's like legendary. Like, that's official, man. Like, I got to get a plaque and hang that up in, in the yeah. poker room. <laughs> yeah, man. And we were just talking. I mean, I mean, that was a great time. I've got a lot of good feedback. The reels, the content from that was amazing. So That's I appreciate awesome. you having me on, man. And I'm super excited to have you here today. Likewise, man. I'm fired up to be here. Thank you for having me. Of course. So for our guests, we like to bring them in. And obviously, we have the entrepreneur growlers over here. And we <laughs> like to compare your journey to that of the beer brewing process. So we'll walk you through just a quick series of questions, get to know you a little bit better. So really starting with the history, obviously, every great beer has a reason behind why it's getting brewed. I know you have an amazing story. So walk us through that and tell us who you are. Yeah, man. Uh, appreciate that. I'll keep it super short and then we can always dive in deeper. Um, like I said, man, I grew up in psych wards, rehabs, detention centers, all that. Uh, made a lot of poor decisions growing up. Didn't have a father figure in life. Uh, I had a great mom, but she just couldn't control me, man. I was off the flying off the hinges. A lot of trauma and stuff going behind that. Um, and then that carried into my adulthood. Did over five years in prison. But when I went back to prison just 20 days before my twin sons were born, that was it for me. Like that was the moment that I was like, dude, I'm done. I can't, you know, not be in their life. I didn't have a father growing up and I wanted to be one so bad. And so that's what got me moving into the direction that we're, we're in now. And, uh, just super grateful for everything, man. And just keep on chucking away one day at a time, man. Love it, man. Yeah. It's an incredible story. It's been amazing. As I mentioned to watch you, even from when I first met you to just the growth that you've had. And it's not just growth in business, it's growth, you know, personally. So talk us, talk to us first about the business and kind of what you guys got going on there and what you help. And then let's dive into kind of the lifestyle that you've created, because I think that's amazing too. Thank you, man. Absolutely, man. Uh, podcast, man. <laughs> I started a podcast in 2018, Underdog Empowerment. At that time, literally, I was just throwing crap on the wall trying to see what sticks, right? You know, um, and I had done YouTube for two years, uh, was doing three videos a week. And then the podcast and like that, like broke through, like I got it ranked on day three and then had Billy Gina's marketing on the following week. Well, before launching this pro podcast, man, nobody gave me the time of day. Like anytime I tried to collaborate with anybody, I guess I just didn't have a big enough brand. I didn't have, you know, and that comes with, you know, building it or whatnot. So launched it immediately started getting me indoors with people I never did before. And I was like, man, there's something here. And so I just started going all in on that. Put out an offer about a year later after that and uh, made up, made 11,000 that month. And that was like, to, at the time I was like, oh my God, this is, this is real, you know, like, and I never made over $2,000 in a month before that. So I was like, wow, that's crazy. And so we just been doing that ever since March of 2019 and just got really good at launching podcasts, getting it ranked on Apple, then growing it, building dominant brands through podcasting. 
I love it, man. Thanks, and man. when you talk about Billy Jean's market, I mean, you've had Andy Frisella on the podcast. Like, you've had some Thanks, big, man. big players, man. So Thank what you. was that process like just – going from what you talked about, like kind of throwing stuff against the wall to all of a sudden you're interviewing like some of the most influential people. Like what was that transition like for you? It was wild, man. Cause it was like, it happened so quickly. It was like, couldn't like even get in there with any regular Joe to like, damn, you're, you know, being able to rub elbows with them. And uh, really what it was is I had the platform, the podcast. So anybody can create a platform with a podcast, TikTok or YouTube, whatever, you know, a platform. Yep. Um, but it was that all in, like, I don't give up, you know, I'm going to do whatever it takes to, to, to make this happen. And so like, you know, when I message people, I'm very aggressive, but not like, like too aggressive where you're like, man, get up off me. But like, I will message every single month until I start getting a dialogue and keep it real short, sweet to the point till I get some dialogue going. And then as soon as I get some dialogue, it's every single week until you tell me no or yes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like follow up, you know, it's got to, got to do it. Love it, man. And you guys have had an awesome transition even since then in terms of the business and taking off. You know, I, I know you've talked about your story in terms of stepping out of the business a little bit and creating that lifestyle. So talk to me a little bit about what that transition has been like. Yeah, dude. Um, and it's crazy because now I'm starting to come back in to work in a little bit more. Never, I'm never going back to 16 to 18 hour days ever, ever, ever again. And maybe, maybe after my kids are like out of the house or something, yeah, yeah. but I'm not going to that while, you know, right now I'm soaking in that moment, but, um, I am going, like, I am getting back to work around, like, 9 in the morning now to 4, so I'm working a little bit more hours, about 8, eight a day. Mm-hmm. But I took nearly two years where I was just working 16 to 20 hours a week. I went from working 80 hours a week, you know, 16 to 18 hour days, six days a week, till, till 16 to 20 hours a week. And it was weird at first, but I had had a kick, I had a kick butt team in place, man. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to do it without a team and, and we had structure and, and, and not the best systems in the world, but we had a system going. We kept on refining it, optimizing it, getting better. And so it allowed me to take that step back and start doing more personal work and actually show up and be a good dad. Cause I was just working too much. I love that, man. And Thanks. yeah, I know we talked on, on your podcast, like I'm not a dad yet, but I look up to you for taking that transition Thanks, and prioritizing like what matters most. Yes. Cause at the end of the day, like we can always get more money. We can always get more clients, but we can't get that time back. Amen. We man. can't get that, that focus and that attention being present. Right. Yeah. And so I, I look up to you for that. I think that's amazing. Another thing that I know that you guys started doing as well as some events and things like that. So talk to me about what that process has been like. Yeah, <laughs> I, uh, we, uh, it, it was great. It was excellent. Uh, but, uh, you know, whenever you try something new, you're going to make mistakes, right? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> Um, we tried to go gung freaking ho. So like we, we made a decision like, you know what, we're done talking about, you know, we're going to do this in the future. Let's just do an event. And so we put together from the moment we made that decision, had an event 45 days later, had a little bit over, it was 84 people in the room that actually showed up, which was incredible and awesome, super grateful. And then I was like, man, let's do small events every 90 days that lead up to one big event every year. And we want it, I want it on this schedule. So let's do another event in 50 days. Yeah. <laughs> and we went all out again. And uh, yeah, I was like, all right, after learning from that, I was like, you need way more time to plan and coordinate an event. Like you can still put it together and it can still be a good event. But man, now that I'm like, all right, we're just going to do one big event a year. Yeah. I, dude, that's going to be killer. Cause now I got a whole year to plan, get right. the speaker line up and all that stuff, you know, so. Love it, man. That's yeah, awesome, excited. man. Yeah, no, I, I saw the photos. It looked like an amazing event. Look, Thanks. Looking forward to attending the one next year for sure. So, man, I love your story. I love what you got going on, and I'm excited to dig into that a little bit deeper here as we talk about the ingredients oh, yeah. within your success. So, obviously, great beers come from great ingredients. What are th- three things that have made you successful in your journey thus far? Consistency, number one, it sounds so cliche, like, oh, everybody says that, but man, it's, it's true. The people that aren't consistent don't get the results and they quit way too early and cry. Like just with podcasting, for example, dude, you can go on Nielsen.com, 90 per, stats and facts. Uh, and this was uh, last time I looked at this was in 2020. It's probably even grown. I don't know. But 90% of people that start a podcast quit be, before episode 13 because they didn't get the results they want to do. They're not consistent enough. They couldn't make that commitment. Dude, like whatever you do, it's, it's consistent daily action. You know, this man of your goal, moving in that direction, taking consistent daily action. Doesn't have to be massive action every single day, but it's this consistent daily action towards that Yep, consistency, man. That's number one. Um, number, number two, I'd say I, uh, whatever word you want to call it, vulnerable or real. I like to say real cause I, the, the vulnerable is such a 
buzz where it kind of grosses me out when I yeah. hear it sometimes because <laughs> it's overused a little bit. Yeah, yeah. But I just like to be real, man, because I'm a human being, man, and I'm no better than anybody else. I re- like I'm, I've developed skills and I'm more skilled in certain areas than other people. But at the end of the day, I'm no better than the next person. Mm. And I got my own crap, too, just like everybody else. And when I notice when I put it out there and I'm real about that, people relate to that. And then I get DMs like, man, I just appreciate how real you are about that. You know, you don't see that a lot in the Internet marketing space because everybody wants to post the highlight reels of them. Just, yep. you know, so that'd be number two. And then uh, number three, just doing what you say you're going to do. If you say you're going to do something, do it, man. It, truth. That's a, it's a, it's a number one core value of mine is, is, is that I'm not perfect with it. I'm not a perfect person, but I, I do what I say I'm going to do. And, and just like, that's why I got this beard. It's down to my belly button. I said, I'm, yeah. <laughs> said I'm not cutting it until I get a six pack. I don't have a six pack yet. So we've been growing <laughs> this for four years, bro. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm going to do what I say I'm going to do. And I'm not going to cut it off until I get a six pack, you know? Love that, man. And yeah, if you're, if you're just listening on the podcast, be sure to check out the YouTube video so you can actually see, see the, the beard, beard as well in, <laughs> in live action. So no, I love that, man. The next thing that we like to get into here is the, the beer brewing process in general. So obviously great beer doesn't happen overnight. You talked about, you know, where you were at in business prior and trying to just literally get someone to pay attention to you to that, you know, success that you've had. So obviously overnight success isn't a real thing. So talk to us about some of the ups and downs in your journey thus far. You mean to tell me overnight success ain't real? Uh, that's I'm quitting. Yeah, right. no, man. Yeah. You'd be surprised. Some, <laughs> some people think it might be. Yeah, man. Um, what, what was uh, the, I'm sorry. I always got a little. You no, know, you're good. So just talk to us about some of the ups and downs. Ups and like, downs. The ups and downs okay. throughout the journey. That's this life. Life, you know, it's a, a seasons of ups and downs, peaks and valleys, um, and it's going to happen regardless. You know, um, th- what I like to do whenever I'm in the valleys is I like to zoom out and see, like, oh, this valley is actually higher than this peak from a year ago. You know, so it's trending upwards. You know, but uh, some of the big ones, uh, like in business, were for me was systems was one of the big ones. Like I was. As soon as I broke through, I'm really good at marketing. That's my jam. I love marketing. I love psychology. I, I, I love podcast marketing specifically or whatnot and branding. But systems, man. Whoo. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I had to learn a lesson and get, I got in really organized and detail oriented. And that's why orders another core value of mine is pay attention to details because they matter. Yeah. We'd be bringing in people, but I'd holding in on the back end. We couldn't deliver. And I was like, Oh no, we got to kill that right away. So I had to really buckle down and get with the right people, you know, and understand like, Hey man, I'm better off being, you know, this visionary and being able to build the culture and being able to, you know, go out and market. But I need somebody, you know, that can come in and, and integrate these ideas that I got, mm-hmm. you know? So that was a big one was getting the systems out. And then after that, the next big thing was like finances. Yeah. I'm not a finance guy either, uh, yeah. but it's yeah. important. Yeah. No, I mean, I, you, you're probably hitting on the audience to what they're going through and that they deal with all the time. And I'm in the same boat. Like I hired my integrator. It'll be a year in December. And it was like the biggest Night game day changer. Difference. Dude, like <laughs> I'm the le- one of the least organized guys. Yeah. Like I ne- literally need you to tell me what to do. And I, I literally tell my wife, Hey, like if you need me to do something, like I'm probably, you know, too dumb to figure it out. <laughs> like I have my brains out in this other different direction. So the integrator really pulls that out of you to be able to systemize and process all that stuff. And then obviously the finances is just huge because, you know, I went from corporate America where I got paid commission and salary and all that stuff. So when, when I make the money, like all I had coming out was taxes. When I started running my own business, you know, (laughs) you you sell a bunch, but not only does taxes come out, but then you also have, you know, expenses and all the other stuff. And so those are such key things that I think every entrepreneur struggles with at some point. So I love love that. So the next thing as we transition is in the fermentation and conditioning. So this is the part of the process where you wait to see what the final result of a beer tastes like and figure out what needs to change in order to get just a little bit better. So for you, what is the biggest lesson that you've learned that you would share with someone that's an entrepreneur looking to save years worth of mistakes? Man, quit ask somebody for help. We as entrepreneurs, man, we try to do, we got like that pride thing or that ego thing or whatever you want to call it. You was like, no, I could figure it out. I could, yeah, you could figure it out, but how long is that going to take you? You know, like I'm not saying don't go and try and develop new skills. Cause I'm always developing new skills. Like right now I'm obsessed with gardening and stuff, you know, Love that. and I wanted to do that just because I grew up the total opposite. I never did any manual labor. I was always like in sales jobs or something mm-hmm. like that, you know? So ask somebody, man, like how I'm learning to garden. Yeah, I studied up on it, but guess what? I also got friends that 
garden. And so I have them come over, we hang out, and we talk about gardening. And it, it shortens the learning curve so much, man. So that'd be my answer for that. So I want to kind of dig a little bit deeper there on asking for help because I think it's something that everybody realizes at some point they have to do. Mm -hmm. What was that turning point for you to be like, hey, I need to go hire a mentor, join a mastermind or do that because I don't know everything? Yeah, dude. All right. So I got a really good story for it. You don't have to go something to this extreme, but (laughs) man, sometimes when you're all in, no, man, you get the all in results. But yeah. uh, So this was back in uh, 2018. Bills were backed up. We got four kids. Bills are backed up. My credit's maxed out. And, and, and we also got the water shut off at the time. Mm. And I went and got a title loan on a Chrysler Aspen because this guy that I was following, Mitch Miller, the dude is a genius when it comes to marketing and he's a copywriter or whatnot and positioning. And he wrote this copy for this offer. And it was just so good. I couldn't, I had to, I was like, I don't care what I got to do. I have to get in this mastermind so I can learn how to how to, how to craft irresistible offers and then write copy that convey that, that message to that, to that audience. Yep. And, uh, everybody said, you, dude, you're freaking crazy. Why do you do that? Yada, yada. Well, I, it's a $2,000 a month mastermind. I went and got a $4,000 title loan on my Chrysler Aspen interest rates. Cra- you know what I'm saying? But everybody said I was crazy. Eight months after that though, I had a six figure business because of that decision, because I went all in on it. And then I honed in that skill and was around those people. And then I put the stuff out and was able to capitalize on it. Love that, man. You yeah. bet on yourself, you took a risk, but you also realized that it was going to be a catapult for your growth. And so, you know, for those listening in the audience, pay attention to that because I think a lot of times people don't take the risks, but they also don't understand what the benefits of asking for help yeah. and getting in the right rooms, right? So I think huge, that's man. that's the problem is, is people don't understand that they have to be at some point in their their career is the dumbest person in the room <laughs> in order to really grow. And if you're not the dumbest person in the room, if you're one of the smartest people, like you need to go find other rooms. Yeah. That's an evolution that I think, you know, everybody goes through as well. Same man. Like, dude, I started feeling like that. Like a lot in 2021, like I was like, man, I got to level up in the rooms and stuff again. And it's so true because then you'll start. It's not saying that you can't help other people that you, that you may be further in certain areas. Right. But yep. you need to be around people that are playing at a higher level. hundred percent. So last thing we like to get in here today, Zach, is talking about distribution. So beer's ready to go. We're going to go market and sell it, all the stuff that you and I love to do. So talk about the future of everything that you have going on. As an entrepreneur within business, what do you got in store for us over the next couple of years? Yeah, man. I love that question. Big visionary. Um, man, what I what I really ultimately want to do, uh, like end game, right, is create generational wealth for my family and, yep. and also impact you know millions of lives, right? Uh, but in the near future, like you said, next five years, scaling the hell out of podcast powertrain, um, helping. I tried to get away from that for two for for a minute there because I was like, I don't want to be known as a podcast guy. But dude, the the golden rule of marketing, you know this man is you can't make people desire your product or desire something, right? You find the desire that's already in the marketplace and mm. then you channel it to your stuff that that fit. You find the market match, right? Yep. And so people come to me, they want to know how to build a dominant brand of a podcast. I've accepted that. That's what I'm really freaking good at. (laughs) And so that's what we're going to do. And we're going to help a lot of people get their message out there and create dominant brands with the podcast. I love that, man. Well, hey, man, I really appreciate you coming on here today. Anything that we didn't talk about today, any last nuggets that you'd like to share with the audience today? Man, uh, th- th- there's always something, you know, to share, but, uh, put me on the spot like that. I would say definitely one thing that, that the tool that helps me out that I keep on going back to again and again and again, learned it in a, inside of a prison cell. My sister died of a heroin overdose and I was in the hole for two months and like had to figure things out in there. Like it was wild. It's, it's asking yourself the right questions. You know what I'm saying? Cause we're going to get, you're going to get into tough situations there's going to be days where like everything's on fire and you're just putting out fires and it's just like, man, and there might be stretches like that too, you know? And when you're in those, you know, focusing on only what you can control, number one, and then asking yourself the right questions instead of saying like, Oh, why is this going to happen to me or whatever that gets you to focus on the wrong answers? Cause anytime you hear a question, you go for the answer. So if you ask more the right questions, what can I do right now to get me one step closer to this or what can I do right now to put me in a better situation? You know, or getting real specific, but asking the right questions and then taking the action that gets you, gets you dialed in, man. Love that, man. I really appreciate you coming on today and, and closing up the episode there. I'll put this in the show notes, but where can people find you online? Where's the uh, multiple places, social media, websites, things like that? Absolutely, man. I got 
three places. All right. Um, just to come, ch- if you want to come check out me, everything I got going on, the podcast, Underdog Empowerment, all the social media, literally everything I got going on, everything's on underdogempowerment.com. Um, you can just find it all right there on the homepage. Uh, secondly, we like I mentioned, those events, July 2023, we are already selling the early birds. You can go, go check. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going all in. Brad Lee said if I put something together really dope, he'll speak at it. Talking to Michael Burt, coming back out. He spoke at my first one. Talking to Sean Whalen. I'm, ta- I'm talking to all these people. I'm trying to pull in the big dogs. It's going to be yeah. hard, though. It's going to be dope. It's going to be a great, phenomenal event. Uh, that's July 2023. That's at underdogempowerment.com slash events with the S plural at the end. And then the final place, if you, if you, if you need some help with podcasting, whether you need to get it launched, or you need to grow it, you can go to underdogempowerment.com slash apply, fill out the application. We can hop on the call. Underdogempowerment.com, underdogempowerment.com slash events, underdogempowerment.com slash apply. Appreciate you, man. Yeah, you heard it all there to the audience. Be sure to check out Zach. This guy is literally one of the best and most genuine guys I've ever met, but he's accomplished a lot already and he's only getting started. So Thank you, man. pay attention to him. Take a look online. Stay tuned for more information on that. And I want to thank you to the audience here today for tuning into today's podcast. Please be sure to subscribe, download, and share our content. Leaving a five-star review goes a long way. And thank you again to Half Go Studios. If you're here in St. Louis looking to start your podcast, and seriously take, out, take a look at what they have going on here. We'll see you all next week. And remember, entrepreneurs aren't born, they are brewed. I'm an entrepreneur, entrepreneur, so I'm born to brew. Thank you for listening to Entrepreneur Podcast with your host, Adam McChesney. Let's